Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the secrets of aligning and distributing objects in Illustrator. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you some of your options for aligning objects in Illustrator and some of the secrets to aligning them. Now, in this document, I've created a series of stars. Now, I used the blend tool for this and I selected a specified number of steps. So I have some stars that are all different sizes, but you can see that the spacing between them is not equal. And here I have some stars that are not all nicely aligned and some shapes here. And we're going to use these to see how these tools work in the Align panel in Illustrator. Now you get to this Align panel by choosing Window Align or you can use Shift F7. There are some hidden options here so you will want to display those for some of the alignment options that you'll want to use and they're visible here so you just click this flyout menu and choose Show Options. The options that are particularly important from this one is this Align To option because how you choose to align objects can have quite an effect on the alignment options that you're using. So for example, let's select to align to artboard and now let's select over these three shapes and let's align them horizontally to the left. And what happens here now is that they're all aligned with their left edges on the artboard because we chose to align to the artboard. Let's undo that and this time let's choose to align to selection and let's click that same option, horizontal align left. Well this time they're all aligned with their left edges aligned to the most left of the objects which was the star. Let's choose edit, undo align. So you can see that you can get some big differences by choosing Align to a Selection or Align to Artboard. There's also an Align to Key Object. Let's see how that works. I've got three shapes here and they've all got different top edges. So let's select over all three objects and you'll see that all three objects has the same type of selection around it. But let's see what happens if we click again now on this square you can see that it's got a heavier align around it and that is setting it as a key object. So the choices that we make now are all going to be relative to this square. So if I decide I want to align these all so that their tops are in alignment with the square, I'm going to click here and they'll all be vertically aligned in alignment with the square. And any object can be your reference object. Let's select these three shapes again. Click this time on the star. Now it is the key object. And for example, if we want to align to the base of the star, then we're just going to click here, vertically align bottoms. And because the star is the key object, everything's going to be lined up relative to the star. Let's have a look at some spacing options. I have three same size stars here. Let's first of all make their tops and bottoms in alignment. I'm just going to click on vertically align top and that aligns them all together so that their tops are all exactly the same. Now let's go and distribute them but I'm going to choose this time to align to the artboard and I want them evenly spaced across this document. So I'm going to click Horizontal Distribute Center and that moves them so that this one is on the very left of the artboard, this is on the very right and this one's in the very middle. But I don't have to do that if I want to align them so that they're aligned relative to each other. I can align to selection. Let's go back and select all of these this time. Let's align them with their bases. Just going to click vertically align base and that's going to align them across on their base. But since they're all the same size objects, it's really having exactly the same effect as aligning them to the top. 
Now we've got a line to selection selected, so this time when I select to horizontally distribute the center, something different happens. The left and the rightmost objects don't move. They're being used as a reference point, and then Illustrator is going to space anything between these two objects out so that it's aligned centrally between the two of them. We can do that with uneven size objects as well. All three are selected. Let's distribute them, and now the centers are equally spaced apart because we have a line to selection selected. Now there's also a feature that allows you to align spacing wise. So I'm just going to click on this one to select it as the key object, and let's go and increase the spacing here. So let's say that we want six points of spacing between each of these shapes. Now let's go and click Horizontal Distribute Space, and that applies six points of spacing between each of these shapes. You may want to use that if you find that the Blend tool gives you half of what you want, but not the rest, because the Blend tool will not give you this sort of spacing. Let's see that again. We're going to select over a multiple of shapes. We're going to select one of them as being the key shape, and then we're going to determine the spacing that we want. This time let's make it zero, so each of these is going to be butted up against each other one. And we'll click Horizontal Distribute Space. And now they're all butted up against each other. If we were to center these, we would see that a little more clearly. Let's choose Vertical Align Center and that aligns all of these shapes up to their centers, and you can see that they're pretty near touching. They would be if they, the centering was actually bringing them up a little bit more level with each other, but we'd see that with other shapes such as circles. You've also got all of these options in terms of vertical spacing as well. So let's go and get three shapes here. We've got these three objects. Let's actually move this one out a little bit so that they're definitely not distributed neatly. Let's select all three objects, make sure that we're aligning to selection, and now let's choose Vertical Distribute Center. And now they're distributed so that their centers are equally spaced. Because we didn't ask for anything in terms of left or right alignment, we haven't got any change there. They've just been spaced out differently. If we want to align them to the left here, we'll just click to align them to the left. Horizontal Align Left. And they're moved into alignment on the left, but the distribution hasn't changed. Let's see that with different size shapes. Again, let's select all three of these. Let's align them to their left. And now let's space them out, distributing them by their centers. Now this is happening because we're choosing Align to Selection, but if we had Align to Artboard selected, something different would happen. They would be aligned to the artboard. The topmost and bottommost shapes are moved out to the edge of the artboard, and any shapes in the middle are distributed accordingly. Let's just undo that. Let's see that same sort of process with these stars. This time we've got six stars, so let's go and select Align to Artboard, and let's horizontally distribute the centers. And here you can see clearly that the smallest and the largest have been aligned on the artboard, and everything in the middle has been evenly spaced out so that the centers of each of these objects are distributed neatly. So there are some of the options that you have in the Align dialog. Be sure to open out this flyout panel and make sure that you have the options shown so that you get these additional options. Be aware of the difference between Align to Selection, Align to Artboard, and when you have multiple objects selected, the ability to align to a key object that you determine is the key object that you want to align to. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel, and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. 
and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.